Well, over the past few weeks, really enjoyed walking through these one another passages of Scripture with you. Uh, I've learned a lot, uh, and I was off, I've also been challenged a lot um, how to, to serve one another and how to, you know, forgive one another, how to love one another. Last week, we even talked about, you know, washing one another's feet. So I was trying to look out this week on how to, to serve my family, how to better serve our church, how to just serve people that I'm coming in contact with throughout the week. And, and i, I got to be honest with you, coming into today's passage, I've been challenged in the past, but I've probably not been as challenged as I will be after today's message. Um, because today takes it to another level. Uh, today's, we, we, you know, again, it's, it's easy to love one another. It's easy to forgive one another. Even last week, it's, we can understand, yeah, we're supposed to serve one another. Romans chapter 6. In chapter 16, we're told we're to greet one another. Now, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? Greet one another. We, in fact, we're really good at that. We're really good at saying hello. We're really good at saying hi. We're really good at you know, giving high fives and shaking hands and hugging necks. Except Romans chapter 16 doesn't stop with just greet one another. I left it off of, of the title because I didn't want to freak anybody out. But it goes on and it says, greet one another. Are you all ready for this? With a holy kiss. Oh, yeah. Aren't y'all excited you came to church today? How in the world are we going to preach on and then implement, greet one another with a holy kiss? Aren't y'all excited to figure out how we're going to get that done today? Uh huh. Are you, anybody nervous this morning? Now all of a sudden you're looking around like, who did I sit next to? You know? <laughs> all of a sudden that, that matters, doesn't it? Um, well, if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to Romans chapter 16. Really, just in appearance, Romans chapter 16 seems to be one of the least interesting chapters in the Testament because it primarily consists of Paul greeting a long list of people. And again, at first glance, it doesn't seem to offer much that would interest us. I've never heard of most of these people people are of no interest to us and can I go ahead and get this out of the way right now most of these names are hard to pronounce but what Paul does is Paul kind of gives us this list of 26 names or somewhere close to that and afterwards he's going to try to figure out how do these 26 names, how do these people that he's instructed the church at Rome to greet, to love, to, to put uh, their, their, their kiss on them, impact us today. Well, I want to start off by telling you this that I found interesting. I believe that all of the Bible is inspired by God. I believe every bit of this is, is instruction to us and is profitable to us, as the Bible says. So one thing that automatically that I begin with is I notice this, is I see that God gave us these names, and what that shows me is this, all names matter. Names matter. Or can I put it this way? People matter. One of the things that I get in Romans chapter 16 is this. Paul is writing to this church at Rome, and he starts listing these people's names in the church at Rome, and he's trying to point out to us, and he's trying to point out to that church that, listen, these people matter. And this is a great message for the church today. People matter. You matter. So whenever we start off and we're getting ready to end in Romans 16 and it says greet one another with a holy kiss, the whole, the whole premise of that, the whole summary of that, I can give you the summary of the message in a sermon in a sentence right now, is this. People matter to God and people matter, should matter to us. People matter to God and people should matter to us. That's, that's the essence of this entire message. That's the essence of this entire chapter. People matter to God, and people should matter to us. So how are we going to look at that, and what are we going to do? I think Paul begins his greetings, and he writes to all the saints that are with them. He doesn't want to leave anybody out. And again, these passages kind of show you Paul's pastoral heart. You know, I, I, I've said this before, but I really do mean this when I say this. I love being your pastor. I love this place. 
I love this church. I've said that so many times, and because I, I, I want to remind myself and remind you, but it's more than that. It's not that I just love this church. It's not just that I love this place. What Romans 16 did for me is this. It, it personalized it a little bit more. It's not enough for me just to say I love this church. It's not enough for me to just say I love this place. Can I just tell you this? I love you. You. Individually. Now, some of you get on my nerves. But I love you. I love ha hanging out with you. I love sitting a, in, a, in an office and talking with you. I love singing worship songs with you. I love preaching to you. I, I love you. And I wish I could list you by name this morning. But I'm afraid I'd leave somebody out. <laughs> but as I'm reading Romans chapter 16, I just want you to, to think about this and to think about names and to think about the personal aspect that Paul is bringing to this. Most of the time, we think of Paul, we don't think of Paul as very pastoral. Most of us, when we think of Paul, Paul's kind of harsh. Paul's kind of straightforward. Paul's kind of not the kind of person that you probably want to watch a football game with. I don't see Paul as being one of those fun kind of guys. And yet here we kind of see a different window into Paul's heart. Romans chapter 16, what some people think is one of the most uninteresting chapters of the Bible, I find as a very interesting chapter of the Bible. Because Paul walks us through this church at Rome. And he says, I want you to greet these people because they matter. People matter. So I want us to just know this as a church before we go any further. It's just that, that people matter. You matter. The person to your right matters. The person to your left matters. The people in front of you and the people behind you. People matter to God, and they should matter. So... I'm going to read Romans chapter 16, and I'm going to butcher a lot of these names. I've listened to them multiple times on Bible audio, trying to master them, and I can't. So I'm just going to go with it, and if you don't like the way I pronounce it, tough. Love me anyway, all right? Romans chapter 16, if you've got your Bible, we're going to start in verse 5. And it's interesting to just to listen as, as Paul goes through this names of, of people. And he starts by saying this, greet also the church that meets in their home. So he starts off by just saying, let's just talk about the church for a minute. There's a, there's a group of people that, that I want you to go and I, and I want you to, to greet them. I want you to encourage them. I want you to love them. And some of you are like, how do you know he wants to encourage them? How do you know? wants to love them well the end verse in, the, in just a moment is going to show you that's what he's talking about he says greet also the church that meets in their home then it goes on and he says greet my dear friend Ephephonitis yeah that's something like that I wanted to blow the first one up real bad so that you wouldn't get on to me who was my first convert to Christ from Asia I get this next one greet Mary now what couldn't they all be Mary's I, mean, <laughs> I can do that greet Mary who had worked very hard for you. Greet, okay, and Dostorus and Junia, I don't know these people, I don't know, my fellow countrymen and my fellow prisoners. Can you think about these people? Not only were they countrymen, but they, they were in jail with. Now listen, that's somebody that you're one anothering with right there, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, these are the people who are in jail with me. Make sure you go tell them, hey, <laughs> make sure you greet them. They are outstanding among the apostles. Woo, how would you like to be called that? They are outstanding among the apostles. I love walking through our community and going to, to, to different events in our community and, and hearing people, and I say, hey, I'm pastor at First Baptist Church, and one of, the, one of the great things I love is when people say, oh, so-and-so goes to that church, right? And sometimes I'm very excited that they know that. But can you imagine if, if this was the response to people when they heard that, oh, you go to First Baptist Church, so does so-and-so, and they say this, they are outstanding among the apostles. They are outstanding among the believers. Oh, you go to First Baptist with so-and-so, he is outstanding in his Christian faith. Oh, she is outstanding. 
understanding the way she loves Jesus. Is that not a, an awesome way to describe somebody? It goes on, let's keep reading. I want you to see this. They were also in Christ before me. They got this whole Christian thing down before I even got it down, Paul says. Greet Am, I don't know, Ampelatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend, Stachys. Greet Apelles, who approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. I don't know. Greet Herodon, my fellow countrymen. Greet those who belong to the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphenia and Tryposa, who have worked hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, who has worked very hard in the Lord. Man, he likes these people. I mean, you just see the same theme going on. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also, his mother and mine. Greet Aristoses and Phygon and Hermes and Patrobas and Hermas and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philagus and Julia, Nereus and his sister and Olympus and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. Again, names matter. We all know how important it is for somebody to remember our name. Isn't it, isn't it important to, to, for somebody to come and say, hey, Jason, and remember who you are? Well, Paul did 26 people in the church of Rome. And again, it's amazing when you realize that Paul had never even been to Rome. These were people Paul evidently had met in his travels, and he remembered them in his prayers. And this is kind of an open window to Paul's soul. He's, he's a serious person, yes, but deep in his heart, he was this pastor who loved people. And the reason he loved people was because he understood what Jesus told his disciples. Yes, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, but also love your neighbor as yourself. People matter to God, and people should matter to us. So I want us to take a, a fresh look, if you will, of this holy kiss. I don't see really beneath the service agenda in these verses, 5 through 16. There's no evidence that Paul is trying to work his audience so that he can gain some kind of advantage or something. And again, I don't want to stand up here and tell you I love you and I love this church and I love this place trying to get some advantage. I just want to just be that. I just want it to be that we love one another. I think that's what Paul is doing. I think a lot of times we make a mistake when we try to find something beneath the obvious. And Paul is just simply saying this, I love these people and I want you to love them too. In fact, that's all what chapters 1 through 11 of Romans is about. Church needs to hear this today. The church needs to live this today. We need to be about loving God and loving each other. We need each other. We need to walk through life together. We need to encourage one another. Anybody else? I've needed some encouragement this past week. Has anybody else needed some encouragement this past week? I've just needed somebody coming up behind me and, and lifting me up and saying, Jason, how's it going? What's going on? Can I help you? Can I pray for you? Can I be with you this week? So we need to, we need to just greet one another, as Paul said, over and over. And the whole purpose behind this is to remember is that people on the surface here is that Paul says greet them greet them greet them did y'all notice that go back and look verses 5 through 16 I mean 13 times in 12 verses Paul says greet them can y'all just let that sink in for a minute <laughs> greet them greet them greet them greet them greet them do you see what he's doing over and over and over Whenever we talk about greeting them, there's kind of like three people involved. There's Paul telling these people to greet others. So there's Paul telling people to greet others. It's almost like Paul is telling us to greet others. So how are we to greet them? In verse 16, he summarizes it by saying this, greet one another. We're in this one another series. He says, greet one another with a holy kiss. So I want to start off this morning by just figuring what out that means. So let's start by talking about the purpose. What is the purpose of this kiss? Now again, the answer to that question, what is the purpose of this kiss? 
What's being carried carried along here? Paul is saying to us that you are to carry something along with you. Go greet these people. And when you greet them, you're carrying something with you. You're carrying with you. What is the point of a greeting? Why do you go to someone and say hello? Why do you go to someone and say good morning? Why do you go to someone and say how are you? These greetings, they're more than just words. You know, the main thing that Paul is trying to say here is this. When you go, you're greeting these people, and you're going and you're carrying this holy kiss with people, and it all means this. We are to love people. Go greet these people with a holy kiss. Go love the people. In fact, go back and four times Paul kind of talks about this. And in verse 5, he says, he says, greet also the church that meets in their home. And he says, greet my dear friend. Another translation says, greet my beloved. Or in verse 5 is not enough. He goes on in verse 8. He says, Greet my dear friend, or another translation says, greet my beloved. Or in verse 9, greet my dear friend, or another translation says, greet my beloved. Or again, in verse 12, greet my dear friend, or the other translation says, greet my beloved. Did you hear what he says? Four times in those few verses in those 11 verses he talks about my beloved go greet them because i love them and i want you to love them the point of this text is this paul saying i love these people and i want you to love these people as well listen that's the essence of what the church is supposed to be the essence of church is so that we love one another. I need to love you with all my heart. I need to love you that I'm willing to put my own agenda aside for your benefit. I want to love you. Paul's saying this, love these people, love my beloved, love these people because I love them. So really what we understand is how to love people the preciousness of christians we should have this 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 desire and this inner tug to love others because people matter when we think of this holy kiss it's not just in moments that paul says this paul says it in first corinthians first corinthians chapter 16 paul says this he says all the brothers greet you greet one another Holy kiss. So he told the church in Rome, he told the church in Corinth. Second Corinthians, Paul says the same thing. Greet one another in a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. He says it again to the Corinthians. He says it again to the church at Thessalonica. First Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. And just to kind of y'all think, well, Paul is just kind of weird. Paul, Peter got in on the act. Peter, chapter 5, Peter says this, greet one another with a, with a kiss of love. love. Greet them with a kiss of love. Now, most of us don't take this holy kiss seriously today, right? I mean, most of us at this point, we're all sitting here, and you're either squirming, you're nervous, or you can kind of just say, well, I'd much rather give a pat on the back. I'd much rather give a handshake. Cultural for them, back in those days but it's definitely not culturally appropriate today have you not seen all the sexual things going on we can't greet people with holy kiss and the usual interpretation is that this holy kiss is that important the greeting really kiss or just shake hands but i can remember being a teenager and it was a lot different to kiss and hold hands there's a difference there. A kiss is not the same thing. The Bible talks about this holy kiss, and it's always associated with love. That's really the essence to this whole thing. The purpose of the kiss is a demonstration of love. So when Paul, and even when Peter, tells us 
to greet one another with a holy kiss basically is what he's teaching us and what he's telling us is that we are to express love for one another. Think about this. Just look around the room. Here we are gathering together to the church of Kirk. Paul might have wrote. Love one another. How well do we love one another? This past week, how well have you loved others in this room? Paul says to do just that. Again, when the Bible, this this holy kiss was a kiss of respect. It was a fuck. It was a kiss of honor. Love. Really what it was the sign of an intense family relationship. Can I just be honest with you? I don't just kiss anybody. I better be pretty close to the person that I put these lips on, right? It's a sign of an intense family relationship is the church. We are family. We are Christ. August, an early church father, wrote this. He said, the early church demonstrated their inward peace by their outward kiss. Another early church father said this, find that our souls are united and that we bank prince of sin. Now, again, if you're feeling a little uncomfortable this morning thinking that we're getting ready to institute the official holy kiss policy at First Baptist Church, let me just put your concerns at ease. I don't mind a warm handshake or the Christian side hug. It's okay. But I do want us to do this. I do want us to love one another deeply. I want us to love one another with passion. I mean, love one another. When they rejoice, we rejoice. When they hurt, we hurt. Let us love one another. That's the, that's the whole purpose of the kiss. Which, maybe we need to get a little more practical, okay? So let, let me give you the next step. And that's the, the principle, if you will. The principle. I've already done letters by encouraging us to greet and then to kiss one another with this holy kiss. And I told you, that's the same thing. So I kind of got this question, if Paul over and over and over and Peter got in on it and he did it as well, why is there so much emphasis on greeting each other when they come together? Again, think through this as we come to, together. It, there's a huge emphasis. In fact, all of chapter 16, there's this emphasis of greeting one another. By the way, can I just plug our greeting team for a minute? Did you realize how important you are as a greeting team? Romans 16 is for you. Greet one another. Tell people you're glad to see them. Open the door for them. We're glad you're here. Smile. Holy kisses don't have frowns. Be generally happy that people are here. This is the, the heart that we're to have. So what, is there such an emphasis? Well, I've got a, re, a, a list of a few things that I kind of gleaned from the passage that I think this is true. And the first thing is this, and I've kind of stressed it over and over, but I'm putting it in different words. This, it's, it's just that people are to be our priority. People are to be our priority. Yes, we love and we serve God above everyone and everything else. We know this. Service to God works itself out by how we love and serve others. I mean, we see this in Scripture. Jesus talks about this. The way that people will know that you're my disciples is by how you love one another. So really, the true test of Christianity is not how you come to church. The true test of Christianity is not how you read your Bible test of Christianity is not how well you obey the Ten Commandments. The true test of Christianity is this, how you love one another. 
By this people will know that you're my disciples, by how you love one another. So how well do you do at that? Again, putting my interests to the side and putting others above myself. To serve others and not be the one being served. And all of this, by the way, is pleasing to God. God is the one who told us to love our neighbor as ourselves. So you realize this, the, the whole principle of this greet one another with a holy kiss is just to understand that people are to be our priority. So that when we come to church, yes, we're here to worship God. I don't want to put that as, as a side thing at all. But in worshiping God, we're caring about one another. That's what the whole series that we've been through this this past few weeks is the importance of the person beside you. The person in front of you and behind you, the, the importance of us and how we treat one another. People matter. Secondly, we see this. Greeting among Christians also assure the unity of the church. I can be, I've known this about relationships. When Sarah and I are fighting, we fuss and fight every now and then. There's not much kissing that's going on. I don't know about your relationship, but during the fuss, during the fight, there's not a whole lot of kissing that takes place. Well, Paul says to greet one another with a holy kiss. It's hard to love one another if you don't even like one another. It's hard to love one another when there's division among one another. It's hard to kiss somebody that you want to punch. That's why unity is so important in the church. That's why Paul stresses it in just about every one of his letters. The unity of the church. In fact, it's not on your screen, but the following, it's right after verse 16. You've got your Bibles open. Go ahead and read with me. It's on your screen, so you actually have to use the Bible. Verse 16, Paul says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send you greetings. But, and then notice the very next thing he says. Now I implore you, brothers, watch out for those who call dissensions and pitfalls contrary to the doctrines that you've learned. So greet people with a kiss, but watch out for those who are troublemakers. He goes on and he says, avoid them. That doesn't sound like kissing them, does it? Greet the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. And that brings unity. The, but, but the people who bring trouble, guess what you do with them? You have to kiss them. In fact, Paul says to avoid them. He says, avoid them, for such people don't serve the Lord our God, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattering words, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. You see, what Paul's talking about here is Paul saying this. When we love one another and we put our own issues aside and think about the, the issues of others, we're unified. We're the church that God wants us to be. But when we're not doing that, when there's divisions and when there's fussing and when there's fighting, there is no unity and ultimately there is no love. And Paul says, avoid that at all costs. Don't go there. I think it's important to understand who he's talking about this to. Greet the brothers. You see this over and over in verses 6 through 16. The brothers in Christ. The, the, the best of the apostles, the ones who are serving the Lord. And then in verse 18, he contrasts that by the people who are not serving the Lord. And the whole reason I make this point is because Paul draws this, in fact, in these verses, eight different times he's referencing these people who are in Christ and in the Lord. Verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12, verse 13. Over and over he talks about these people in the Lord, who are in Christ. And he's trying to make the important, important, important point. We are to greet those people who are in Christ, who are in the Lord. And again, it's talking about this unity of the church. 
The reason is, is because we have the same Savior, we've been saved from our sins, and we're on the same path. And other people aren't like that. In fact, listen to Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Paul talks about it, and he says it this way. In Romans 5, he says something, uh, he talks about how we are to, 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 to love each other because... We have been justified, he says, much more than since we now have been declared righteous or justified by his blood, we'll be saved from him through wrath. The reason we get to love each other so deeply is because we've both experienced the same thing. I realize how much I've been forgiven, that's why I can forgive you. I realize how much God has loved me, that's why I can love you as God has loved me. The reason I'm able to kiss you with a holy kiss is because I understand how much God has done for me. We're on the same level. We're on the same path. Or further down in Romans chapter 8, he tells us again, he says this, For therefore, no condemnation. Hell is not our destination. There's no condemnation now exists for those who are in Christ Jesus. We've been rescued, and Paul says this, because because we bring unity in the church as a tree stand up so tall without ever falling well the reason is is because it's great roots roots go deep and the roots are really the most important part of the tree i mean a gardening website describes roots this way you say i really did big research here Roots store nutrients for the plant during the winter and transport water and minerals during the active part of the growing season. Roots also provide the anchor to the plant, keeping it from toppling over during extreme weather conditions. The church is just like this. We don't just sit on the surface. There's something deeper. There's something vital to the church's existence. The true church rooted in Christ. That's what he says over and over and over in chapter 16. These brothers and sisters are rooted in Christ. In fact, just walk through me. Go back to Romans. Open your Bibles to Romans 16. We'll start in verse 2. It says, that you may welcome her in the Lord. Welcome her in the Lord. Or verse 3, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Drop down to verse 7. They were in Christ before me. My beloved, in the Lord. Verse 9. My fellow worker in Christ. Verse 10. Who is approved in Christ. Verse 11. Those in the Lord. Verse 12. Those workers in the Lord. Verse 12. Worked hard in the Lord. Verse 13, chosen in the Lord. Verse 16, churches of Christ. Did y'all see anything over and over and over and over and over? The root in Christ, in the Lord. So the whole key to us, loving one another, greeting one another, is that we're together. But Paul warns us there are some people even some people in the church who are not in the Lord. And in verse 18, he warns us of that. And he says, avoid them. Watch out for them. Be careful. Because they do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. He says, watch out for those people. You see, unity is constantly trying to be pulled from us, and we have to fight for the unity of the church. And the way we do that is we love one another. We greet one another with this holy kiss. Let me give you a few more. The third thing is this. Just simply relationships matter in the church. Again, I've said this many times. Christians are not to live those in the air as those who are superior to others. Christians are not to live off by themselves as they don't think they need one another. Relationships matter, and we do need one another. Listen, I believe in this. Sunday school and life groups are vital for your relationship. Your relationship to Christ, 
but your relationship to one another. If you come to church and you're not in Sunday school and you're not in a life group, one or the other, you're not the Christian that you should be or that you could be. Because we were never meant to do life on our own. We were meant to do life together with one another. And you need to go deeper with people. You need to open up the Bible with one another. Relationships matter. Listen, it's hard to have relationships in pews. It's hard to have relationships in pews. Because all I'm seeing is either the back of your head or I'm not seeing you at all. Right? It, it's, it's hard to have relationships in pews, but it's easy to have relationships in circles. And that's what Sunday school and that's what life groups are. When someone comes to my house, we sit around the table, we eat a meal together. Then we come together in our living room. We bring our kids, and they all sit on the living room floor, and we sing a song. And we review what the kids learned downstairs, and we say a prayer. And then we open up the Bible together. We talk about life struggles. We talk about parenting struggles and marriage struggles. And we do life together. That's when relationships matter. You know what? You don't get that here. You don't get that here. You can't get that here. You get that in groups. So again, I just want to encourage you, if you're not in a Sunday school class, we have a Sunday school class that meets every Sunday morning, right? Come early. I read something last night that Herschel York wrote. He said, listen, the simplest step of obedience is waking up, putting your clothes on, and going to church. <laughs> Wake up, put your clothes on, and go to church. Can I take it one more step further? An easy step of relationships is get up a little earlier. Get your clothes on and come to school. You just can't get up. Find a life group because life groups meet in the evening. If you can't like Sunday night, well, they meet during the week. Find one that meets for you. And listen, if you just can't find one, I'll start one for you. And we'll start it together and we'll grow it together. And then I'll hand it over to you and you can lead it. But I'm just trying to tell you the importance of groups. You cannot do life by yourself. So if you didn't hear anything else this morning about kissing, hear this. Get in a group. Get in a group. A Sunday school class, a life group, get in a group. It's vital for your Christian growth. I believe it's important, even biblically, that we one another one another. That's what this whole series is about. Well, let me get this last point. Greeting one another also sends a message that we care about one another and that we're in this thing together. We care about one another, and we're in this thing together. There's an interesting passage of Scripture in Psalm chapter 2, 12. It's kind of interesting because it talks about the, uh, the, the king. It talks about the son, and it really describes the Messiah or Jesus' triumph, his kingdom in the end times. And it says, pay homage to the son, or he'll be angry and you'll perish in your rebellion. For his anger may ignite at any moment. All those who take refuge in him are happy. That word, pay homage, other translation says, kiss the son. It says, listen, kiss the son. And again, to kiss the son is this symbolic allegiance and submission and care. Care for, for what Jesus has done for us. There's another illustration of this. I don't have time to get into it, but in Luke chapter 7. If you don't know the story, there's a, there's a record in Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 36, all the way down to verse 47. I don't have time to get into the whole scripture. But there's a Pharisee. He invited Jesus into his home to, to eat a meal. Now, again, last week we talked about the custom. The custom was that you were to have your feet washed. 
before you came into the people's house. Well, again, this Pharisee didn't wash the feet of Jesus. So this sinful woman came in. She saw Jesus at the Pharisee's house, noticed that his feet had not been washed. So she comes and washes his feet with her tears and wipes them down with her hair. Now they all said, oh, this is gross, what's going on? You can't believe this sinful woman's touching you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Jesus kind of turned it on them. And in Luke 7.47, and I remember Luke 7.47 because I just remember a big airplane. 7.47 says, you know, those who have been forgiven little, those who have been forgiven little, love little. But those who have been forgiven much, love much. If you have a hard time loving somebody, you just need to remember how much you've been loved. If you have a hard time loving others, you just need to remember how much you've been forgiven. How much Jesus loves us. So much that he sent his son. My life and I look at all the sins that I've committed and to realize that Jesus has forgiven them all the least I can do is to love my brothers and sisters the least I can do so when Paul writes greet one another with a holy kiss I'm just reminded of you and how I am to love you. How deeply I am to love you. Listen again as Paul writes to a few people in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, Paul is writing to this church, this church that he loves. And he says, I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you always praying with joy for all of you in every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion of the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because I have you in my heart. Don't you love that? Paul says, I'm praying for you. I'm encouraging you because I have you in my heart and because you are partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense of the gospel. For God is my witness. How deeply I miss all of you. And I love this last part. With the affection of Christ Jesus. Where does it all come from? The affection of Christ Jesus. Can I tell you how I love some of you when you're unlovable? Through the affection of Christ Jesus. You know how you can love me when I'm unlovable? Through the affection of Christ Jesus. This is what Paul is saying. This is what he's talking about. Uh, in Colossians 2, Paul talks about the, the hearts of people of God being knit together in love. So I want to close and ask you two questions this morning. Here's the, here's the so what of this message. So what? Greet one another, holy kiss, I'm not doing it. Fine. Let me ask you to do these two things. Number one is this. Is there a Christian in this church that you just don't want to greet with a holy kiss? Is there someone in this church that you try to avoid? That probably means that there's something between the two of you that needs to be settled. Now, you don't have to kiss each other, but you do have to get it settled. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Second is this. What can you do this week to take a step towards greeting another brother and sister what can you do maybe it's just picking up a phone and calling somebody this week telling them that you love them asking them can you pray for them 
Or maybe it's getting out a, check this out, an old-fashioned pen and paper. And you write them a note. And you put a stamp on it and you mail it. And in that note, you just write how you care for them. How you can encourage them. And how that you want to pray with them. Or maybe it's just calling somebody up and saying, hey, can I take you to lunch this week? I just want to, I just want to sit down with you and talk. Maybe it's going up and hugging somebody who's going through a difficult time and just saying, I'm here with you. What is, what, is there, what is there this week you need to do or that you can do? Not necessarily need to do, but you can do for somebody else. A phone call, a note, a lunch, a hug. We all can do something, right? Right? We all can do something this week to take a step towards greeting one another with a holy kiss. The sum of the matter is this, because God has viewed us from the wrath of sin that cost him his life, and because we gather together as a church, and when we celebrate the fact that we are saved, where we tremble with joy and we look at one another's eyes we can say can we believe it can we believe that we get to have this we're here we're together we're not going to hell we're we're going to heaven and we'll be there forever and as we celebrate that let's look to one another and love one another let me close with this one verse. John wrote in chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love our brothers. We know that we're saved because we love our brothers. Anybody need to love your brother this week? I hope you do. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I just thank you for the passage of Scripture that on the surface (laughs) is intimidating. On the surface sounds like just a bunch of names. But as we have walked through that, we know that names matter. Even more than that, that people matter. And God, I just want to thank you for that fact that you care for people. You care for each one of us here this morning. You cared so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross, to pay the penalty, to pay the price of our sins. And because of that, we celebrate, we rejoice, and we have a new family in this room. A family of brothers and sisters from different backgrounds, a family of brothers and sisters with different problems, but We're still family. And God, I just pray. God, I just pray that we would take Romans 16 to heart. That we would just love each other. Celebrate in the good times. Weep in the bad times. That nobody feels alone in this room. Because they understand there's a family right here with them that loves them, that wants to do life with them. So God, it's my prayer that this week we look for opportunities to greet one another with a holy kiss. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.